Do you do love you color? color? We all we do, all right? Do, right? Today we are starting a two video series about doing professional color shifts. Have you ever wondered how those are done? Have you ever wondered what are color shifts? Then you are in the right place. So let's walk into your fashion studio. Okay, let's start with the big question, what are color shifts? Well, color shifts are a very important element of the design process. I am going to show you a very simple example. For instance, I'm going to take this paper out because it is a copy. It is not the actual mood board. But we designers develop a mood board where we have some inspirational images. We can make a collage with all those images. And then we have a fabric story. In this case, it is right on the top. And we have a color story, which in this case is at the right side. So these are color shifts, okay? These colors are extracted from the main inspirational images. Let's take a look at another example. Well, you can see the specific kinds of colors that are extracted from the collection presented. This is for a trend report, okay? So the specific kind of blue, for example, is here. The specific kind of vanilla yellow, mustard, the brown, the oranges, the pink. A great way to find color, to reach out for colors, is to have one of these guys. These are Pantone. I am going to link in the description box below the specific information that can help you find this kind of product, which are like color books, and they are like the ones that you may find in a painting store okay but we are fashion people and we do not use the ones from the paint store we use the pantone ones this is the plus series formula guide solid coated and uncoated and it contains 336 new colors, okay? Pantone is the universal language of colors. Here is another book. It is also Pantone. It is the formula guide of solid uncoated. Let's see if we can get that in focus. There you go. This one is a little bit thicker, as you may see, and it contains a lot of colors. Color shifts, as I said before, are a very important element of a fashion design collection. And when we are talking fashion design, we are assuming that the fashion designer is coming up with all the ideas, not just the trends, not just the styles, but the colors too. Color shifts, they need to be smooth, completely saturated and very defined, just like this. Now, when you are in this process, 
of coming up with your colors that you have your palettes and you have your colors and you have your brushes how do you do some beautiful color ships just like this I am going to show you so make sure you watch until the end of the video and you learn how to do your own professionally done color chip before we move on with the process we have to talk about the disastrous way of doing color chip okay here I have an example of horrendous horrendous color chips before cutting of course so you can see here the different brush strokes and we see two different tones we cannot have a color chip with this kind of streakiness we cannot have color chips that are dry at the edges they should feel completely smooth just making sure that you understand that these are not good but in order to develop professional quality color chips you need to know this very well I am imagining that you're wondering oh but if I am going to use a brush and I'm going to be painting how am I going to be able to obtain such a smooth color chip like this one's haha well what do professional designers use they do not use acrylic they do not use markers they do not use pencil they do not use watercolor they do not use god forbid the paint store ship i am going to explain later on why you should never do that so make sure you watch until the end because i've done a lot of work for professional companies and we work stuff like this if you are working a collection to show it off to your friends only that's cool you can do whatever you want to show it off at your university and they permit that that's cool also but if you are a professional and you are presenting something to a company that actually is going to make this collection and invest a lot of money into developing those you need to sort out specific kinds of colors and this is the way to do it I am going to prove why you cannot use markers you cannot use acrylic you cannot use pencil and show you why designers always opt for wash so here is a small collection of my gouache paintings designers watch dries flat it dries a little bit darker than when it's wet so you have to be very careful and we're going to practice that I always recommend to have the main and most used colors which are cyan yellow and magenta three primary colors always have of course white and black as well so I have other colors here which might be interesting to you I have flame red brilliant yellow cadmium lemon ultramarine turquoise blue burnt umber yellow ochre cadmium red Chinese white so we have yeah you get it you get it you can buy other colors so you might be asking yourself what exactly is gouache gouache is opaque watercolor you can find like everything in this life different types of brands 
if you find a brand that sells a humongous amount for a very low price how do you think the quality of that quash will be it will be cheap right so I do not recommend that you buy your gouache in a super discount store this is a product that if you're going to use it professionally you may find it always in an art store this is an art store article I have over here this little tray that contains 12 little bottles I am sorry it is not clean but I use it a lot it contains this little bottles with a plastic cap and it's very tight sealed and I recommend that you get something like this and you will see and understand why later on so make sure you watch until the end of the video let's talk about the proper brush to do color chips the proper brush is flat it is not so wide it is not so thin so a proper brush I would say would be something like this one that I am holding here you are going to need water because gouache is an opaque watercolor so it is water based and I suggest that you have a few water containers I have three each containing around 8 to 10 ounces of water what kind of paper are used for making this color chips which they need to be in a thick kind of paper they need to hold enough paint absorb enough water and still get a smooth surface so in this case I am going to use this brand Strathmore Bristol um, it is vellum surface it has 20 sheets in this case I'm going to use a 9 by 12 inches but the size really doesn't matter we are going to understand the process of doing this and you might use several pages of this so I am going to reuse that's very important when you're doing some practice because we're practicing now for the purpose of this video if I was going to do a professional job I would just use the new one okay so I'm going to put just a tiny bit of this ultramarine blue this brand is Winsor Newton ultramarine blue these are 14 millimeter bottles let's just mix it with a little bit of white there you go okay and I'm going to aim for a little bit of water and then I'm going to pat down both sides of my brush I am going to pick up a little bit and start mixing on the side okay so dilute it a little bit let's take a little bit of white and I'm going to make a little mixture here and you can see that it is watery okay so I'm going to add a little bit more color more of the paint because we cannot have a watery mixture this is not for a watercolor artistic painting which are beautiful there we go these are to make a color chip a perfect color chip remember we are making up just any color randomly we're just talking about texture and we're just talking about quality so I work 
the both colors, mixing them, pressing the brush down until we get one entire color mixture. Okay? Now I'm going to pick up with my brush the majority of the paint as I can and I am going to do a tiny small sample of a swatch here for the purpose of this video. So I'm going to press down, press down on the other side. As I move, I am not overworking it. I am not going over it over and over. I am just letting it be. That's it. Now, I need to let that dry. I need to let it breathe. So, leave it. Back to this, we basically need more paint. So, let's go again and get more paint. But we don't want to do another color, right? We, we want to stick to that lavender kind of blue that we already did because if not, I am doing another color. You can see it here, the difference. So I am going to need, obviously, I am going to need more white. That, there's the color. Now, I pick up more paint, again, guess where I'm going? Here, right? And I'm going to do a third swatch, pressing down. We don't want streaky, remember, and we don't want bumpy. Let's forget about the pink ones. These were not done today. Let's just focus on this. There you go. And you can see they all dried a little bit darker. Let's not look at the edges. It doesn't matter because we're going to cut them out for a presentation. But this is already streaky. This is streaky too. This one have like a huge dry spot here, which might affect the overall size or workable size that I could just cut out. Um, this is streaky hell. I'm going to put them all to see if you can notice the difference, but you can see the that's the same kind of hue. Some of them are streaky, of course, but that's the point of doing different types of swatches with that same hue because we need to have several of them in order to choose the best. Let's say we already selected the perfect swatch let's say i just chose that one please don't cut it with scissors because you might do a crooked edge what we do is take a transparent grid ruler it's 18 inches long it's my favorite ruler for pattern making we are going to measure a square or any type of shape that might work on your presentation what you have to make sure whatever shape you decide all your color chips needs to be that same size with my ruler i am doing some 
horizontal lines and I'm going to do vertical lines to obtain a square. There we go. Now, this means that I am going to cut here with a metal ruler and a sacto knife. I am not going to use the scissors because it is very easy to get this lines crooked and you want a seamless perfect edge. Okay I went off camera and pre-cut my ship with this specific sacto knife. I like this thick handle because it gives me more control. This is the right position, the correct position when you're going to use a sacto knife. Your fingers should wrap around the handle and you should have your index finger pressing down, pressing down like this to make a nice cut. How do you cut this kind of thick paper? You would just have a cutting mat underneath very important please have a cutting mat underneath have your metal ruler to guide you right on the line and the edge that you're going to cut and then you come up with your sacto knife and you score and then you score again and then score again until it just cuts nicely and very smoothly. For a collection you can have rectangles, you can have squares, you can have stars, you can have circles, whatever shape you want but they all need to be the same. Remember I am talking about professional work. I am not talking about your own designer collection which obviously you can do whatever you want as a designer but if you're working for a company that is paying you money to obtain this information from you you need to do it professionally and you might be asking yourself what is the purpose of going through all this trouble let's pretend that you saw this painting you love the colors and let's say that that is your main inspiration image for your collection you will need to extract the specific kinds of colors that you see in this picture and that would bring us to our color ship so this is not the same kind of blue on the sky but I hope that you understand what I'm saying. That All right, this wraps up our first part of our two video series on how to do professional color shifts. Remember to subscribe to our videos. We have tons, tons of fashion videos coming your way. Bye bye.